Good morning everyone, welcome to my channel. Today's um, video is about my um, sewing needle book. Not the one that I use personally myself, uh, it's about a little one that I make just to use up scraps. Great little project. Um, I'm actually going away for a couple days holiday, so this is what I sort of like to take when I want to limit what I can pack and have hours and hours of um, activity to do if I find that we're just sort of sitting around watching movies or the weather turns bad or whatever and we can't do the usual holiday activities. So what I do is I prep as much as I can so that I'm just ready to go. I do um, like the little needle book because it is easy to pack and of course uses up heaps of scraps. So I'll just take you through my preparation to go on the holiday and a little bit of uh, information about this little needle book. I've made so many of these things over the years and I often use them as gifts or I pop them into sewing journals. And in some cases, if I've got a few, I pop them in my Etsy store just to move them along and that allows me to just keep making some more. So we're not gonna make it as, as elaborate as my personal one. There's just so much work in this and I keep adding to it and adding to it. It's sort of going to be a mini version of this. So I'll just pop that to one side. Now the first thing I do is I prep a piece of uh, calico, which is my base to embroider. Now this piece I just snip and rip and I have measured that in at about eight and a quarter across and the height is about six and a half, six and a quarter. So that's in inches, doesn't have to be exact, but I find that that's a good size for a little needle book to hold uh, your bits and bobs. Then I, I actually do two pieces of that. One will be on the inside and then of the outside. So when you tear it up, do two. Then on the inside of the two pieces, I have a piece of felt or wadding or um, blanket or what else, pellon. These are all products that are very good for putting in between uh, quilts. And this, of course, this little needle book, it just adds a nice sponginess to the cover. I like to go with this cotton um, product. It's a cotton quilter's wadding. There's also, my next favorite is just felt. I tend to stay away from pallon because I find it's very synthetic and as I pull my needle through, I sort of feel like there's this metally grabby, scratchy sort of feel, which makes it a little bit unpleasant. So I've cut a piece of um, this wadding. It can be a fraction smaller, but if it is the same size, it can always be trimmed back because what we're going to do is we're going to place on the front piece and the um, pellon or wadding, all of the bits and pieces that you're going to embroider down. The piece that's going to be the lining, it just goes to one side for now because we're going to stitch everything down, decorate, embellish. We're going to um, put the, um, what am I trying to say here? Um, all, all the slow stitch embroidery is going to be worked first. Once that's done, then the lining is going to come back. That will sit on top and then we're going to machine, machine stitch right around the outside of the piece. You can whip stitch around to add even more texture to the, um, the project. But I tend to mis machine stitch and I use a zigzag stitch. And it's the one where it's three little stitches, then it turns back on itself, three little stitches. Not sure what it's called. I might just draw it instead of the standard zigzag that just a sewing machine does. It does three, 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 three. I just find it's a finer looking zigzag. So I really tend to use that one a lot more than this one. This one, because the needle goes in and then jumps across and jumps across, it can pucker up through here. So you start to have your edges of your piece sort of look a little bit scrunched up. Where I find this one where it does three little stitches, then turns back on itself for another three and then another three. It's just, um, I don't know, it seems to make it sit sort of better. So there's a bit of a tip the old zigzag stitch, look for the one that does the three little stitches within the zigzag. 
Okay, so the next thing, once this is all stitched and I've got my lining and I've whipped around the outside of it to secure it, the only other thing I'd do prior to that is I'd use some seam binding or ribbon as a little tie. So before you come down this edge here, you would need to attach your um, seam binding, but we'll go through that uh, a little bit later. So I'm sort of giving you a bit of a, an overview of where I'm at. Then I'll stop the video, do a heap of hand stitching away on holiday. And then when I come back, we'll go through the actual construction process. Because I think I've already told you something wrong. The seam binding needs to go on this side so that when the book folds in half, it comes across and then goes around a button. So um, that's already something that I've just spotted that is not quite correct. So it actually goes on this side. Okay, so the next thing that I will have cut and ready to take on holidays is the section inside that the actual needles go into. So this little piece of um, felt, and the measurements on that, that is across six and a half inches and height uh, just under five inches. It could be five, there's plenty of room for it, but I tend to make it a little bit smaller and that's like a little mini book as well for the inside, for all of your needles. What I will do while I'm away is I will embellish that with just some running stitch around the exterior of it and I will um, then be able to stitch it into position when I'm ready. But it's something that could be pre-prepared that outside edge. And then I have two additional pieces. These are like little flaps that um, hold the needles. Now those are cut at two and a half by um, nearly four and a half. Now these little guys, I turn the top over just a little bit. I'll put some running stitch there to secure it. And then when I'm ready, that will be slip stitch with a hidden stitch in behind into position. So there's two of those that will sit like that within the felt booklet. Okay, so while I'm away, I will stitch that down, then they'll be ready to go. I will running stitch around this internal booklet, so then that's ready to go. So I tend to just pack that like that pop that up there. My internal piece is ready, probably won't need it until I get back because that really is just the sewing machine part of it. You can attach all of this to this internal piece, um, but I tend not to. I find that I finish the cover, then I make these components, then I attach them. Because there's wadding in there, you can easily slip stitch anything you wanna add to your cover and the threads or the stitches will disappear into the wadding and they won't actually show through. So, but if you're worried that your stitching will appear this side, there's nothing stopping you creating this whole internal piece before you attach it to your cover. And that's when we do that machine stitch around the outside. So entirely up to you. I tend to finish the cover in its entirety then add this and just make sure my little attaching stitches for this component is not showing through to the other side. Um, now what else will I show you? Oh yes, I have gone ahead and I've prepped a heap of um, needle books. So this doesn't then allow me to take a heap of scraps so it, it limits my packing and the composition is pre-planned, everything's pinned and all I've got to do is pick up a needle and thread. But being that I like to rummage around the local um, stores up there, I might find some treasures. So I have got a little pack of pre-prepped covers. So if I did find some treasures and I felt like stitching them, I've got a little pack of them ready to go. But if I can't get out of the house and we are, are not going anywhere in particular, these are ready to go. So I'll just do a little flip through. This one here is a piece of embroidery and then some random pieces of fabric, some uh, lace across the bottom and the top, and then I've stamped the words dream big 
on a little piece of calico here as well. So there's plenty to embroider here from little flowers. I'll add some seed stitch. So I'll just bring that up to the camera. You can sort of see the composition of what I'm thinking this will be once it's all stitched out. So there's plenty of work there. And then in behind is some um, felt ready to go. There's my little booklet piece ready to go. So I will probably take some pink cotton and then the internal stitching, anything I do in there will be on the pink. And then underneath that is the backing and I'm prepped a little pocket that's going to be a scrap piece of calico, a little bit of lace, and that'll be stitched into position. So that's like one set and that will make one little booklet. I've also got packed the um, seam binding. I've tried to keep it all within the one colour so that I don't have to think too much. That could be maybe tacked into position on the right side that it needs to be. As I said before, it actually needs to be this side so that as the book closes, it's at the back to come around the button. I've also popped in some buttons and um, once again, just kept it all generic colours so that I don't have to think. It's just um, mass make is the word I'm looking for. So I've got my buttons and the seam binding. And this little one is just needing the, um, the work to put it all together. So I've just messed that up a little bit. I want to tidy that up before we move on. And then I'll show you the next one. So that's one of them. So I'll just pop that to one side. Here's another one. Let me just pick that up. So that's just a piece of um, quilt fabric going across the back that's come out of a jelly roll. So it's about two and a half inches wide. Then a piece of lace. Then some random textured pieces of fabric, some hemp. The word sewing. I've pinned a couple little doily um, motifs there that have been dyed pink. And then I picked up this huge table runner um, a couple months ago that is just all of these flowers and you'll see it pop up in my work I, I just love them because they're just great elements to add to um, any piece so that one's ready to go and of course there's my felt there's my internal bit and a pocket bits and pieces ready to be attached so I'll pop that one to one side here's my next one this one has a little piece of embroidery that came off of an old uh, tablecloth so I've added that of course, the word sewing and then some nice um, lace from when I've been cutting motifs out of placemats, crocheted placemats. I stamped the little key, so I'll just stitch around that and then put some general stitching in behind. So they're all the green tones. And if I've done it correctly, there's the felt, there's the inside, there's the back. And here's a little pocket that has had a sewing machine stamped onto a piece of calico. And then I've just pinned a little bit of lace there that um, will go on to that as well. So that one's done. Pop him away. This is the next one. This is a really good way of just having a look at the composition of what I've put together. This one here is once again that doily that was on the first one. A little bit of crocheted doily there. It's sitting on a background of chocolate quilted fabrics. There's one, two, three, four I can see in there. A little bit of um, placemat here and lace, another little bit of fabric there. And I've got plans to embroider just a, a little flower here. And that there is just some circles of fabric that um, I've cut out and I'll probably put some French knots in there. I've got a little, little rectangle of fabric behind. So pretty much thought it all out, composition's ready to go. It's just time for needle and thread. So checking that we've got it all. There's the back, there's the felt. There's the internal little booklet and the pocket, little bits and pieces for a pocket. Okay, I usually only put the one pocket in my needle books because sometimes I find that people might want to stitch a little bit more felt on the back to hold more needles. Pockets are good for a few odds and bods, but it's all about storage of needles. So it gives them the ability to add an additional page there or even a full uh, needle book. They might decide to make another one of these and stitch it into the back there so it just gives them a little bit extra storage so I tend not to embellish the back all right so I'll pop this one to one side the next one is if 
got a feature flower again. Just pick all that up in one set. Okay. All right, so I've stamped 15 cents here on a piece of uh, calico. The word sewing is in the top. Nice big doily piece, a second one, and then another one of those little flowers. And then a little bit of lace running through the bottom. So that one there is ready to go. And it should have, yes, the back, the inside pieces, and then a little bit of lace and calico for a pocket. Okay, now here's the next one. Let's just get everything in my hand that belongs to this little pack. Okay, so this one I've used a couple pieces of um, lace motifs that are similar sort of design, a real cottony one and then a, a shiny synthetic one. Underneath it is a little bit of fabric that's all embossed already from a pillar slip and then an additional doily and then tying it all together, some lace in the back there. So that one's ready to go. As you can see, there's a lot of work here, but um, when you're sitting around and uh, chatting, it just gives you something to do. Very uh, easy to take. This little one, the little owl, has been stamped onto the fabric. I believe that's a Kayser Craft uh, stamp. The motif, and then I've just run the line of quilt fabric and then trimmed it with a little bit of lace. So everything is there, ready to go. Yes, the pockets inside. Yes, the booklet, the wadding, and then the two pieces, the front and back of the calico. Okay, last one. Yes, this is my little bunny one. Little bunny cut out of some fabric. Uh, a corner of the doily used here. So it goes across and then up there. Then uh, the word love, a little random piece of fabric and a full doily has been stitched into position there. I'm not stitched yet, just pinned. Okay, so that's all of them ready to go. So we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, oops, oops, six, uh, seven, eight, okay, so eight ready to go, and then just in case I get through all of those and I end up shopping and finding some treasures, I've got a few more components cut, there's a couple more here as well, that I can, um, yeah, use as well. So I've also packed some buttons and the seam binding that I'll use to secure them closed. I've got my scissors. I've got a container that some pins can go into and then a bag, which I think I just got from Officeworks or Amazon that zips up and everything can slide into. So that's pretty much it. The only thing I've got to add is some basic cream thread, the one, the style that you'd put in your sewing machine so I can invisible stitch it all down, get rid of the pins. Then I might put in a general um, crochet cotton perle cream just to um, um, do any embellishing. I'm just going to hop up and grab one of those to show you. Okay, like one of those. That'll be used for decorative slow stitch. And then I'll just grab some random threads that match the colors. So there's a little bit of that blue and the pink and a little bit of chocolate. So I'll pop in a couple threads in addition for, you know, a little bit of decorative work, especially the one that has the flower on it. Um, I'll need a few colors for that. May even need a green as well. So that is my holiday pack. I'll finish the video here. So when I come back, I'll show you the finished products, join the video together so you can sort of see how they evolved and um, what they became. Okay, thanks everyone. I will see you soon. Bye. Hello everyone, I'm back. So I've had my little four day holiday and pretty much the weather was perfect and we did something every day. So I actually only got two of the needle book uh, completed or well, semi-completed. I'll just show you what I did and then what I will do is complete them and at the end of the video I'll just have some photos of that final stage. So what happened with them is I stitched down all of the elements just with some little invisible stitches so that made them nice and secure. Then I just had a look at the piece and worked out what I could do to embellish it 
the um, this one in particular I picked up on the pink and I just did some little uh, running stitch around perimeters of um, the piece and then put a little bit of white through this center so really not a lot not a lot at all and I sort of didn't want to go crazy with it so I'm pretty happy with that little one so that's nice and secure and in the process I also attach the seam binding now the internal piece what I did with that is I stitched down the little pocket using some of that same pink thread that I used on the front that'll sort of tie it all together I then stitched around the perimeter of the felt and also created the two little flaps that the pins and needles actually sit in so I just turned down the edge stitched across turned down the edge stitched across and then to attach them to this little piece of felt I just got um, just standard cotton and I did a little um, slip stitch in along the top and then just flip that up and continued around the bottom here as well so sort of uh, ensuring that it's nice and secure I could have put a little dob of glue in there as well but I didn't take my glue with so I just made sure that I did lots of little stitches and also made sure that they didn't show through to this side once that was secure and the outer edge the decorative edge was completed I then folded it in half marked the middle drew a little line for myself did the same on the piece behind and just running stitched it down into position so that it's nice and secure so that completes the internal component the outside is done so really the next stage now is to take it to my sewing machine and just go around the perimeter um, with a zigzag stitch so nice and simple and then the little booklet is complete except for it just needs its button so I'll stitch that button on and the little tie is already secure and it will go around the button so that one will be done the second one I did same sort of thing I got the um, front done I did some uh, stitching through that piece of lace I then created the little floral treatment here with um, some French knots and some bits and pieces stitched down some little leaf and some flowers so just a, a tiny little detail there and same again on the inside I just used the same pink cotton went around the perimeter of the felt stitched that piece um, over with the decorative line and then with some cotton just secured it with some little slip stitches so that it's not going anywhere then found the middle and attached it the pocket this side it was a different lace from that one and I end up making a double pocket it um, I was going to do it the other way around and then I realized that it had that little edge and so I, I just sort of mucked around a little bit there and made a second pocket out of the lace on top of the main pocket I not only used the pink thread to make it look like that was holding it all down but for extra strength I just went through and did a few little invisible stitches along there just so that it's just nice and secure and once again all it's left to do now is run the sewing machine around the perimeter joining it all together and then um, attaching the button into position which will sit somewhere around there and that'll just be hand stitched on and then it's ready for its closing and ready to go so they're great little projects easy to take gets rid of some scraps and to be honest I might even pick it up in a week's time and do a little bit more stitching through here it's just one of those things that I like to have around and I've still got everything ready to um, grab again the um, the third one I sort of started I just got everything attached down I hadn't got to the word yet but everything is stitched down it's yet to have some decorative pieces so I'll just leave that in the little bag the rest of them are there <clears throat> so at any time I can just grab and go so a great little project it clears a lot of scraps from your desk and then you've got these gorgeous little needle books that you can use as gifts or pop them in journals etc so i'll leave it at that i will finish these two pop some photos at the very end of this video and then um, once again they'll pop up one day with a little bit more progress on my little needle books thanks everyone enjoy your stitching bye bye